This is Aussie Mac Zone. We'll cover everything Apple, including Macs, iPhones, iPads, and more. All this from an Aussie perspective. Sit back, relax, and insert yourself into the zone. The Aussie Mac Zone. Welcome to show 141 Aussie Max Zone. I'm lucky enough to have Garth here again. How are you, Superstar? <laughs> G'day, Michael. How are you? <laughs> superstar? I don't know. You keep going with the Superstar business. I think you're the Superstar. Nah. You're the one that does all the work, turns up on time. <laughs> I just sort of run along at the last minute. And go, I'm here. Hello. <laughs> That's <laughs> I'm right. I'm trying to make the internet work. You hit them back now. Which up, is not always right. easy. <laughs> it is a challenge sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is. So don't forget, we are here by the thought of my mate Glenn at athwebhosting.com.au. Uh, affordable competitive plans, WordPress, Joomla, and many more scripts. Uh, cPanel, PayPal, as well as well as other cards. Twenty four seven ticket support system. Friendly help when needed. That's our our friends at athwebhosting.com.au. So, you know, I just decided I'm waiting for Apple Pay. When's he going to introduce Apple Pay? I don't know. <laughs> yes, that's interesting. Why not? We'll have exactly. to take that up with him. Come on, Glenn, onto the Apple Pay, mate. Yes. Why, um, game. It's gone gangbusters again now because um, Westpac and NAB have said they're getting involved and having talks again now that ANZ's actually run out on its own. And I personally have applied for a card so I can do my Apple Pay from my watch. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully finish this week. And as I said, everybody, go Excellent. out and apply. I used to bank with ANZ too, and I switched <laughs> over to a different bank. And I don't know, come on, Suncorp, get yourself together. Yes. I've got the, I've got the American Express. Yes. I can use my, you know, Apple Pay on my watch, but you know, no one takes American Express. <laughs> That's a funny one, that one. That's the same problem. Yes. So, so what do else what have we got for stories tonight? Oh, there's a ton. It's a ton. It's been a, a big whole week. Heap of stuff going on, isn't there? Yeah. So we've got Apple debunks there's rumors. There's updates coming out the wazoo. Yes, that too. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> well let's let's debunk a few rumors first before, yeah, so we, Apple come, debunks before rumors. we come out our wazoo. <laughs> <laughs> that it'll stop selling iTunes downloads. So Apple issued a rare statement on Wednesday debunking rumors that claim the company has plans to discontinue iTunes music downloads sometime in the next four years, ostensibly in favour of an all-streaming service powered by Apple Music. What do you reckon? Any comment? No, he's lost me. <laughs> oh, you know what they say over at Aussie Techers, though, don't you? What? You can't have to that fire. Oh. <laughs> I've still got you, too. No, you, you've come back again now. Can you hear me? Yep. Hello. You're oh, good. You're... Okay. So you know, our, our mates over at our mates over at Aussie Tech Heads had had lots to say about this one. Obviously, Apple are completely stupid. They're doomed <laughs> for even thinking about this. Even though they said they're not doing it, because there must be smoke. I mean, yeah. if there's smoke, <laughs> there's got to be fire, right? <laughs> so. And obviously, why, you know, well, I'll just go to Amazon or someone else to buy the music if Apple aren't going to sell it. But you know what? I, I kind of almost agree with them a little bit in terms of maybe they are thinking about it down the track. And you know what? I bloody hope they are because the world is changing. The world is changing. You've got to be there for it, don't you? Yeah. So um, estimates are that, you know, from 2012, Apple's download iTunes sales are around the 4 billion mark and estimated to be around 600 million by 2019 because the world is changing. <laughs> so if at some point in the distant future they're really not making that much money on downloads and all the money is being made on Apple Music, then, hey, yeah, you know what? They'll probably turn off the downloads. But in the meantime, while it's still a profitable side of the business you know the infrastructure's there why wouldn't they keep on going that's right and um 600 million's still a fair chunk for stuff that doesn't cost them anything it's not nothing yeah 
Exactly. <laughs> well, very little anyway. You know, the cost of business is for that, that time. But, but, you know, if um, the other thing, you know, I had an interesting point on this the other day. I'm not sure where it was, but if we think about supporting artists that we that we like, you know, I, I bought a Die Straight album years ago. A whole heap of them, actually, because I like Space. <laughs> That's my era. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm not going to go and rebuy it again because I don't need to. But if I listen to that same album on Apple Music, a fraction, tiny, very small fraction, nonetheless, a fraction of a cent goes to them. Yes. So, you know, the, you know any, any bizarre artists that you wish to choose um if you've already got apple music listen to them through apple music and you're going to be supporting them yep. in a much greater way than you know um listening to an album you bought 10 15 20 years ago <laughs> um by all means if that's the way you want to do it that's fine it, it really doesn't matter yeah um i don't think apple are stupid enough to think they're going to force people to go to Apple Music by stopping people downloading music. No. You know, they're not, they're not <laughs> complete idiots. <laughs> that was if we've learnt one thing from, yeah. <laughs> by watching Apple for the last few years, <laughs> they're not complete idiots. <laughs> um, and interesting they'll that try and make got... Apple Music a, a service that's valuable. Yes. Sorry, and, you go. No, and they said we've got the uh, student discount now too. Whereas Apple are effectively paying the artists full price and only earning half the money from the students. But if you tie a student in for a couple of years and get them to get all their playlists going, and they're not really going to leave you in a hurry to go through all that. No, money. that's right. So exactly. Yeah. Long term. Just no, it's, long term it's thinking. Long play. Yep. It's the long play. Yeah. And um, preparing for the future is not is not a <laughs> dumb move. <laughs> So, so, I know. So, we've got some more news about so Apple Health Labs still operating, operating six days a week. So, 9 to 5 Mac is reporting. Uh, you might have thought the health and fitness labs that Apple created to help develop the Apple Watch might have closed once the product had launched. But a piece in Time reports that they are still operating 12 hours a day, six days a week. So, um, some of the people have been able to visit the lab recently. And uh, they bring their Apple employees, every shape, condition, ethnicity, to do various exercises and monitor them with sophisticated medical systems available. Apple has seven full-time nurses in the facility uh, and using medical monitoring equipment that can determine all types of health-related data points. Uh, analysis Tim Beheran says that unnamed Apple execs on the watch team told him that Steve Jobs' experience of the healthcare system was a key motivation behind the development of the watch. So that that's a good story, and that's why I think they've still got still developing all those um, like health kit and and care kit and that sort of thing. And yeah, absolutely. That was a really interesting story. I hadn't I hadn't seen that one come up, and to see it in the notes was um was really really cool yeah so six days a week 12 hours a day we certainly know that uh, apple's employees do come in all shapes sizes and ethnicities <laughs> don't we yes <laughs> there's nothing wrong with saying that is there you know <laughs> and with all kinds of piercings as well <laughs> but um just, no, that's neither here nor there <laughs> to this story <laughs> um no it's it's very cool and it's it's an interesting little um a little tidbit about you know, we sort of think of the Apple Watch in terms of this is, you know, Tim Cook. This is under under Tim Cook's reign. But, um, you know, as as we have been told many times, these products are in in the in the mind, in the you know, are in development for a long time before they ever see the light of day. Um, and the fact that you know, Steve's health issues may have in fact played a part in the whole initiative to develop the apple watch is quite an interesting thought that i hadn't hadn't had before seeing these stories that, yeah that we've seen in the last little while yeah yeah so it's good to see they're still going looking out looking after all their staff trying to keep them fit so they can work longer hours <laughs> oh exactly <laughs> 
and get all our updates and up so there. they <laughs> yeah and speaking of updates we've had yeah. like i mentioned a, a wazoo's worth yes. in the last <laughs> the last day or so yeah um new updates to the iphone 9.3.2 um new update to el capitan uh we've got new os uh new what is it apple tv OS, tv os yeah and new Apple Watch OS as well, 2.2.1. Yes, non-stop. Um, <laughs> and iTunes. Non-stop <laughs> updates. And iTunes, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know that there's too much functional in any of these. Have you, I mean, there's the potential bug fixes in iTunes, maybe slight usability improvements. Um, I know of one with the iPhone with, with VoiceOver. There was a little bit of a, a bug with the languages that was fixed. Yeah. But I think it, it's mostly just a stability and and performance type update. From what I can tell, is that have you have you come across anything specific? Uh, no, I just just read up the you know what this update is blah blah blah. And like you say, like the voice one, that um, where it'd give you a different voice when it was doing the punctuation, which is <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny actually. That's, that's very un- like I don't know why to go and think that. It was a different voice. It's just funny. I don't know. That's weird. It, it must it be some weird. freaking programming there. Because you'd have um, <laughs> you'd have the Alex American male voice, and for the punctuation, you'd have a Karen. You know, you know, have a yeah. female Australian voice. It was just, <laughs> just odd little fun things like that. Weird ass, yeah. Um, weird ass, but yeah. other other Bluetooth audio issues fixed with the iPhone yeah. SE. Yep. Um, what I haven't seen anything on Apple TV yet as to what's what's happened with that with TV OS. Um, just didn't want to get no, left out, I think. It's just it didn't want to get out. No, it, well, it was updated too, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Caring and sharing. Just didn't want to be left out. <laughs> oh, I didn't want to be left out. <laughs> yeah. Now, later on in the rundown, I see you've got a story about Apple being doomed because yeah. of not not obviously they weren't. You know, they're doomed. They were still the most profitable company in the world, but you know, apart from that, they're doomed. Yeah. And um, the rapidity. <laughs> <laughs> one of um one of one of Eric's stories a couple of month a couple of weeks ago was uh, uh, an assertion that Apple must be doomed because of the rapidity of the updates. <laughs> now I can't remember exactly how that worked out and how that made sense, but but that was the argument. So I'm not I'm not too sure. So maybe if um Eric does decide to come on, he can explain to me how uh, regular updates of these products. Um, this is in the beta cycle would be indicative of Apple I've just gone to slowness again. So Okay, yeah, we're just oh, coming. No, you're back again now. <laughs> there we go. Quick yep. hit it. <laughs> so Shivers. We'll rock Probably on this one. Um, Apple unable to repair iPhone of teen lost at sea. So a team of Apple engineers worked around the clock to return missing Florida teen Austin Stefanos's iPhone back to working order after it was submerged in seawater for some eight months. But on Wednesday, the device was deemed unrepairable. So Austin and his shipmate Perry, both 14 years old, went missing last July uh, on a fishing trip off the coast of Florida. The US Coast Guard found the pair's 19-foot boat in an initial search and rescue operation, but the vessel was set adrift before salvage teams were able to tow it to shore. In March, a Norwegian supply ship rediscovered the boat 100 miles off the coast of Bermuda. Stefan Officer's iPhone 6 was later found in a stowage compartment. Investigators had hoped the device had held clues as to the missing boy's whereabouts, though concerns were raised regarding whether or not to subject the sensitive electronics to potentially risky data recovery. So um, there was a bit of a blue between the two families about what to do, and they finally came to agreement to give it to Apple to try and do some work. Um, Ultimately, Apple couldn't do it they tried everything i'm sure they've tried everything possible um and at the end they they said no we can't do any more 
and they've basically held on to it so they decide who gets it next which expert sort of the next next the row of experts up the tree can try and have a go at it that both families agree on it's a funny one that one isn't it yeah i i hadn't heard of this story beforehand but um well yeah i'm not sure there's a lot not not sure that there's a lot to say on top of that really no. obviously they've, they've given their best bet best go to try and recover yeah. any information they can but you know six months at sea um submerged yeah. <laughs> yeah. we so can hardly complain about the bill quality when it doesn't work <laughs> after that can we no and it's salt water too <laughs> <laughs> yeah salt water that's right yeah um you know that's the thing with the watch even yeah. Yes, it's waterproof, but um, I don't think I, I still haven't been in the ocean and I shower with it on all the time. It's n- yeah. no issue, but um, big difference. Yeah, salt, <laughs> yeah, big difference taking it into salt water. I'm not, yeah. I haven't been game to do that. Yeah. So now so, we've got yeah. a, a big shout out to Matt, also from South Australia. Thanks for the feedback and support email this week. Glad we make your drive a bit easier and drive safe. And thanks again. So. Absolutely. Thanks, man. You know, really appreciate any of the feedback we get like that. It, it's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. And um, there was a little bit of, there's another bit of feedback in there too. Have you seen the one from Lindsay? Uh, that was the one about the um, virus, the spam? The spam on, on the iPhone, yeah, to yeah. A, a Big Pond account. I'm not sure if you were going to tackle that one at all at this point. Uh, no, I was going to research it for more because I only got it late this afternoon, but... Have yeah, you, have okay. you got an have a look into it a bit more. Yeah. No, I don't, no. to be honest. I think the first thing we'd want to know, though, is if she's set up the Big Pond account as IMAP or, or POP3. Yeah. And by the fact that I think she's saying on the computer she's got it going into folders, it, it's probably set up as a um, POP3. As a POP3. Otherwise, yeah. it'd be reflected on the... Well, it could well be reflected on the uh, phone. Yeah. So, yeah. So, might be yeah. Lindsay, if we're you We're looking just... into it a little bit. Yeah, if you can, t- we will be emailing you, of course. But if you can just uh, keep in mind, we'll be asking whether it's an IMAP account or a POP3 account, uh, and we'll be going from mm-hmm. there. But we're definitely out to, to try and sort it out. So thanks, Matt. Yes. Thanks, Lindsay. Keep them coming. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Let, any feedback is always good. Good or bad. That's right. So, Forbes uh, crowns Apple the number one brand of 2016. So despite the gloom and doom sentiment surrounding Apple's first bad quarter in over a decade, Forbes saw through the smoke and mirrors of the media and market bears and still found Apple to be the most valuable brand and in a class by itself with a value of 100, so this is just the brand name, 154 billion, 80% more than the second ranked Google. So it's the seventh straight time Apple has finished first since Forbes began valuing the richest brands in 2010. Brands get their value from how customers perceive them, uh, said David Rubenstein, Professor of Marketing and Branding at the University of Pennsylvania Wharton School. And what makes it valuable from a company perspective is that customers are willing to pay a higher price or are more likely to buy the Apple brand. It's a home run in both fronts. So yes, I would agree. Uh, Absolutely. Forbes' yeah. Kurt Badenhausen then states that Apple files will cry blasphemy, but Apple phones are not the distinct, not that distinct from the latest Samsung gadget. Yet Apple commands a premium price and accounts for nearly half the smartphones sold in the US, along with the 75 million sold globally during the December holiday quarter. And and we make a profit on them. <laughs> Fancy. Fancy that. That's probably why they're doomed, though. <laughs> yes. Because so they're making a profit and they're making something that people want. Yeah, so get out. Yeah. Who does that? I know. That's not how you play cricket these no. days. Come on. So uh, 1 to 10 are Apple, Google, Microsoft, Coca-Cola, Facebook, Toyota, IBM, Disney, McDonald's, and GE. So a little yeah. bit of a mix you know in the one that surprised me the most in there was IBM. Yeah. Like I know they still have a, a, a large present presence in the corporate market, but um, massive presence in the corporate. Market. You know, <laughs> uh, what mind share do they have in the general population? Yeah, I would think it was about zero. Outside of corporate infrastructure, you know, who yeah. who ever hears of IBM these days? 
And or this this Forbes article seems not largely on perception over anything else. Yes, doesn't it? But so uh, I th- it depends yeah. on what the questions are. Like it might be what software do you use at work, or how do you rate your software you use at work for some people. Hmm. You know? I guess so. Um, but I I would still maintain that most people who were even using um, IBM software wouldn't even know. Yeah. It's not like it's part of the UI. It's, it's you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it just seemed like an interesting one to be in there, a strange one to be in there. Yeah. Um, I don't doubt the validity of it necessarily. It's just <laughs> like, oh, wow. <laughs> IBM, who are they? I, I remember yeah. them roughly. <laughs> I remember them once a day, once upon a time when they used to make computers yeah. that I could buy. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just thought it was interesting that it was still there. <laughs> so we had an, an unusual story. This one wasn't in the rundown. Um, Apple Siri was entered as, as a fisher. Uh, sorry, I'll start again. Apple Siri was entered as a speaker in an official Australian government parliament transcript. So. A hilarity ensued in the Australian Senate earlier this month as the iPhone voice assistant Siri interrupted and derailed an official committee hearing. Um, (laughs) Australian Senator Rachel uh, Seward, I I hope her name is, uh, was making a fine point about non-compliance in an education employment legislation committee hearing when she heard the familiar beat from her phone that means Siri was looking for orders. Um, Siri's comment, Sorry, I did not get that. Actually went into the transcript <laughs> as an fantastic. unidentified speaker. But the exchange caused the chamber to break out in laughter and jokes. <laughs> That's awesome. I hadn't heard that one either. You're, you're pulling out all the beautiful stories tonight, Michael. That's, that's fantastic. And it's Australian too. <laughs> it's an Australian yeah, story. They had, yeah, they had Karen on. Oh, no, yeah. it's not Karen now. It's um, a different voice. A Siri voice is a different voice from Karen. Oh, um, um, I don't know what her name is. I don't know if she's got one. <laughs> hey, you. <laughs> hey, you. Yeah. Siri. Cheryl. <laughs> yeah. No, that's fantastic. <laughs> so we're hoping uh, also that Apple acknowledges reports of a personal music files being deleted. iTunes update that's just turned up. We hope fixes it fixes it even though apple supposedly hasn't been able to replicate the issue so that's just come out on on the vast majority of any of these situations i i blame a user error to be honest (laughs) oh no Um, user error though but on the basis of the you know the We've lost a bit. Just hang on a sec. Yeah. It'll come back. It always yeah, does. It'll come back. Apparently. The voice is there. there the go. video is there. It is. So, okay. Yeah. Good. Cut. Oh. Pace. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all right. That's all right. We just <laughs> lost you there. Just slowed down again. So what about the yeah. the big bucks that uh, Apple gave an Uber competitor in China this week? I know. And DD, I think it was, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And it was what a billion dollars a they billion purchased dollars. a stake yeah. in the company, and so. this DD has what eighty percent, seventy to eighty percent of the market in China yep. for uh, for the ride. Now I'm not sure if that was the whole taxi business or ride sharing specifically. You know, is it yeah. just a Uber competitor? Or is it you know? But it is a large percent either way, eighty percent of the market. Yeah. Um, and it's to study Chinese people. To study Chinese needs. people, do you reckon? That's what they said. That's what Tim said it was. To study the. Mm, okay. How 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 does that how did that quote go? Oh, I I don't have it with me, but it it was to okay. s- to study the like the Chinese people and the uses the and needs. I think yeah. So and it yeah, could be okay. everything, you know. I saw another a quote that you know, hey, they've got so much money sitting in offshore, offshore funds that they can't really bring back into the country to without incurring huge penalties anyway, yeah, yeah. huge tax action penalties that they might as well 
drop a bit here and there where they might be able to make a bit of money in the meantime. And so, and it it's still only a bit. Well, only it's only a billion <laughs> it's only dollars. A billion dollars per. <laughs> only Apple could say it's only a billion dollars. Yeah. Right? Yes. Um, but it does. It it just adds to the whole underlining of you know where are they looking to go with the um, you know Project Titan doesn't it you know yeah that's um, just just all part of it isn't it they can it is, ask questions you know. while they're driving along that might be part of the driver's job even if they're a taxi driver how are you going uh, i think i think the basic uh, <laughs> basic principle here is to get rid of the taxi driver <laughs> um, the uh, long term that's what they're all chasing that's that, what they're all chasing yes. is to have the car without the necessity to hire anyone to put behind the wheel yes long term um, but just the passengers. Yeah. yeah, so it's a big week because Tim Tim Cook's in China. He's talking to the government. They paid a billion dollars for their their investment, and there's a garage band update that's got Chinese music additions to it. Mm. So There's a every little they, bit uh, helps. They're obviously uh, putting the butter on one side of the bread at that point, <laughs> aren't they? Yes, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> the other side's well and truly buttered so we better, <laughs> we better, <laughs> better add a bit more down, to this yeah. side yeah um so and and rightly so you know it's you know it's a huge market there so yeah it all adds up exactly yeah so don't forget aussie tech radio at www.aussietechradio.com or when you're on the uh Aussie Max Zone website. There's a button there for, for our uh, tech radio. And don't forget Aussie Tech Security Podcast and those other blokes over at, what's that one? Aussie Redheads or something? Oh, Aussie Fatheads. Aussie Techheads. <laughs> oh, oh, I thought you said Aussie Fatheads. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say that out loud? <laughs> I think you might have. <laughs> no. So, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can't help myself. Um, and I noticed Glenn, Glenn, created a an Aussie Max Zone Facebook page. That yes, we're just just getting that? that. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, I don't. We haven't done anything with it yet. And a bit I like Aussie Max Zone Twitter on the account. <laughs> <laughs> haven't done a whole lot with it, but no. um, there's a couple of likes on there from from various listeners. So yep. thank you very much. And. Uh, it will, it will. will be the, the intention is to make it a, a private like a what do you say a private group is it or you have to sign I don't in know. Um, and it's just so that's only to keep the spammers off it okay yeah so that, that's the way it will be set up when it's finished yet but it is underway all right just so everyone knows we're trying we're trying to <laughs> I'm trying to get and into Facebook what <laughs> so listen to, uh, You've slowed down again. You must be getting old, Garth. It's, it'll come back in a sec. Facebook and I don't see eye to eye very often, so I'm <laughs> getting my head around it. But yeah, that's right. I'll get right. my head around it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, but any any way to contact any way to let me say that again <laughs> but anyway to you know be in touch with the listeners is is a good way as far as i'm concerned yeah because we've got a few few exciting little things happening in the next couple of months i think that, that i'm working on yeah. So, yeah okay nice yeah well you'll have to let me let me in <laughs> yeah. on the secrets anytime now <laughs> um now also don't forget while while we're talking about the future uh to book your teach your seats for the evening with steve wozniak um, mm. I know they're still being sold. I actually bought mine yesterday because <laughs> I'm driving along going, geez, I haven't done that yet. Oh, so you're going? Yes, I'm going to the one in Sydney, which is on a Sunday night. Excellent. Australian Technology Park. I, would, I wouldn't miss that. And, and the, the seats range in price from about $40 for a student. There's a, a small group of student prices. And then it goes up to 100 hundred dollars and but they also meet and greet which i think starts at 450 i think was the price for the ticket yeah that might be a little bit tickets. out of the price range that one yeah our sp uh, so um get a, yeah. get a new um get a new ipad mini for that instead I think. <laughs> yeah 
Oh, speaking of new iPads, um, just one thing I read just before we came on was that the new little iPad Pro, um, they're getting some error 53s after they do the 9.3.2 update. Yes, so, I heard that one too. Yeah, so, so if you are sitting on a, an iPad Pro, especially the 10-inch model, the traditional size, yep. just hold off on that update until we, until, uh, any issues have been resolved. Yeah. Um, and I'm not I'm not going to be updating my wife's 13 inch at this point either. We'll, we'll just wait on just, that one for a week or two. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> just in Another case. Few yeah. Days. yeah. I mean, I'm sure if anything did go wrong, you'd be into the Apple Store and they'd sort it out or give you a new one or whatever, whatever. Yeah. It'd be sorted. But um, let's just avoid the issues by not updating first yeah. day, hey? <laughs> you don't want to get bent over your head, do you? When you <laughs> your wife no, says, that's what have right. you done to my iPad? <laughs> what have you done to my iPad? <laughs> exactly. No, so that's right. Um, so we'll just hold off a minute on that one. Yeah. So um, for for a few business people or people um, thinking about what they can do, there's uh, four steps to creating a mobile development strategy. So there's uh, some people called Accelerator has published a white paper for steps to creating a mobile development strategy. Uh, companies now have a window of opportunity to think about how mobile can transform their business as radically as the web did, says Accelerator. By making mobile a part of their overall digital strategy, companies can transform their relationships with their customers in even greater ways than they did with the web. The white paper tells you how this can be accomplished. Uh, Accelerator is a company that helps web developers create mobile, tablet and desktop applications. So this wasn't an ad. This is... um, just something I came across and I thought people should be uh, able to look at it. There, there'll be a web link on our show notes for tonight. And um, while I was working in somebody's business today, um, they were talking about exactly this in that they were talking about they were updating their web page and the boss had been out to talk to someone and, and basically was told the only people that look at web pages now are um, uh, headhunters looking for people to poach to take this to another company <laughs> so uh, and that you'll end up having e- each uh, like even this small company will have an app that they would get their customers to download so they could keep an eye on the update for their um, the work that they were getting carried out and it's just an easy yeah. way for the customer to have a look digitally anytime they like where they're up to um, and it was interesting because <laughs> they were originally they were getting ready to have their photo taken for the website, and because they reckon the only people that look at websites are people that are trying to poach workers, they don't put their photos up anymore because it makes it easy to work out who the right person is when you, you know, if someone's standing at the front of the shop waiting for people to walk out. <laughs> 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 so yeah, the web's dead, everyone. <laughs> it has, it's changing. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. Apparently, like Apple. Uh, so it's, iTunes it's problem, selling is it? dead. The web's dead. <laughs> I've got, got nothing sure to live for now. <laughs> pull up stumps and go home. Yeah. <laughs> Racking up we're home. What are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> no. It's um. It's true, though. Like, you know, most interact most online interactions these days that I would do are through an app or a, of some kind of, you know, little of it is directly through the web, through the browser. Yeah. Um, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You know. That reminds me of someone I was talking to on Saturday who makes uh, dancing outfits for kids. Uh, has okay. a website and has a Facebook page. Basically, no one buys off the website anymore. They might even go and have a look there to see bigger pictures of the outfits, but still does everything mm. on does all the process of buying it using Facebook. And oh, she says it's harder. Just... It's harder. Everything's harder when they do it that way. Giving you, you know, she's got all arranged oh. to give them a receipt and all this carry on. So amazing. It's um yeah. I, I was talking to a person the other day about the same. 
well, not the same sort of thing, but, you know, there were, all their news comes from Facebook. Yeah. Like, Facebook's strategy to be the internet is really succeeding in a scary way, as far as I can tell. <laughs> you know what I mean? You yeah. Know, it's, it's, that's, that's people's interaction with the, the world. With the online world. Yeah. yeah it's and through Facebook. And just they're getting into Facebook's getting into trouble at the moment in America for um, having a bit of bias in the presidential campaign. They're, they're looking into that. Oh, but they're a private company. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, but you still got to. They're not. You still got to report no. properly. You can't. No, they don't. They're a private mm. company. They can report however they like. They're not a state-funded. They're not the ABC. You know. <laughs> <laughs> ABC, yeah. BBC, whatever, state-funded, yeah. they need to be balanced. They need to be accurate. But any private organisation, they can do whatever they bloody like, as far as <laughs> I'm concerned. And um, it's up to yeah. us to to realise that they may have a bias one way or another. Yeah, true. Um, you know, there's... Uh, but if that's the only place know, I get my my news from, I don't Then you're an idiot. Are... <laughs> <laughs> I, well, we already know I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Michael. <laughs> Not you specifically. <laughs> this is why I'm. This is what I mean about people being. You know, how how it's disturbing how people are so focused. How how Facebook is becoming the internet. Yeah. Their strategy to become the internet is concerning simply because they are a private organisation. That there's no. There should be no restriction on them. You know, that, yeah. in terms of how they report. Um. They're not a free and open carrier that has to be, uh, you know. No, no. I think it's the other way. I think it's where people um, say, say my friends, I've got three friends that like Donald Trump and three friends that like Hillary, for example. Mm -hmm. I might be getting the three friends from Trump but only one friend from Hillary because they're actually controlling the data feed to me. Through Facebook? Yeah. As yeah. opposed to saying this is what's happening out there, they're they're fiddling with the resources that that I'm getting from my f friends, and they're they're changing the structure of it instead of giving me everything. I think that's yeah. that's the sort of thing that's happening. Okay. Okay. So. So. Yeah, it's not that it's not you like might a have news those three saying, things, but um, yeah. but let's say you know over the last. Six weeks as you know it's algorithms right yeah last six weeks time you've clicked on the stories that your three nitwit trump friends have <laughs> posted and you've ignored the stories from your hillary friends yeah just stop for a sec the non <laughs> <And> <laughs> And so they think, you know what? Hang on a sec. Yeah, my internet connection is unstable, I know. Yeah, there we are. Checking, checking. <coughs> okay. Pardon me. So over the last six weeks or so, you've clicked on the stories from your nitwit Trump friends more times than you've clicked on the stories from your more intelligent Hillary friends. Yeah. So as a dutiful algorithm... I'm going to provide you with the stories from your Trump friends because they're obviously <laughs> the ones you're interested in. Yes, true. That's a, that's probably how it works so, out. Uh, you know, it, it comes back to make sure you know these biases. Um, yep. I don't know that Facebook needs to be controlled in terms of, you know, you shouldn't be biased like that or you should not have these algorithms or these algorithms should give equal weight to all sides of the story. I've always hated that idea of giving equal weight to all sides of the story um, simply because, you know, I can come up with some harebrain hair, idea, completely off the rails idea. And, you know, if I'm going to be fair as a national provider, I need to give that stupid idea as much airtime <laughs> as I give the sensible ideas. Yes. You know, <laughs> which is just ridiculous. <laughs> I've decided that the earth really is flat. And I demand equal airtime to promote how the earth really is flat. Yeah. It's completely ludicrous. <laughs> so, it isn't? So, 
Well, I don't think so, no. They're scaring I'm not you sure, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, you know, I could be wrong. Yeah. But as far as I know, it's a bit of a ball, the old earth. But um, mm. can't, can't. So, I, I, yeah. So, I, yeah, I, I don't know. It's a tricky one. Yes. It is a tricky one. Yeah. So, uh, for our Be aware. To, be aware. As a, yes. as a, as a consumer of, <laughs> of internet, as a consumer of the internet, <laughs> be aware of any potential biases and, and uh, make yeah. your own judgment. Have a look at more you know, than one moving place. On. <laughs> yeah, there's a good idea. Have a look more than one source. <laughs> yeah. um, so here's an interesting one. Uh, this is a bit of preparation involved in this. Uh, if you know you're going somewhere where you may not get a very good internet signal and you're going to want directions um, or you don't want to use roaming, for example, so you can u use Google Maps when you don't expect to get a signal um, search for an area you'll be going to, for example, like Springwood, New South Wales, and it'll come up nicely. There's there's Springwood. Now in the search field where you usually dictate or type your destination address, simply type OK Maps, and you'll get a screen that asks if you want to download the area. Tap on the download button, give your an area name. Google will suggest something if you're a bit unsure. And once you hit OK to confirm the name, your iPhone or Android phone will download the area you've named. Google Maps will show the download progress with a percentage and when it's done, you're good to go. Head off into the wilderness with your saved digital map. You can zoom in and out, ask for directions and anything else you do with the online version of Google Maps. Now you've got a way to make yeah. sure that you're always able to get where do you want to go with Google Maps, even if you end up somewhere far away without any data very cool yes i've known you could do that with google maps for the longest time that you know you could download maps so they're available offline mm -hmm. i didn't know that's how you did it though <laughs> you just type in okay maps okay maps that's it yeah and that's there the starting go. point how cool yeah, yeah so right that, that's th thanks to lifehack um, and a reminder it works on both ios and, and those android thingamajiggies <laughs> oh yeah those, uh, those paperweights yeah so what yeah. do you think anything else you've I got think it's to... awesome no I think we've uh, I think we've damaged people's ears enough for tonight yeah so, <laughs> and I've already got half of next week's stories filled up already and how to so I'm rocking <laughs> fantastic you are Michael thank <laughs> you very much just gone funny again my friend there you go so everybody thank you very very much for listening to to us um, you're nearly back Garth hang on a sec you're nearly there yep. just keep talking now you're enough. back you're back yay say goodbye good night <laughs> good night good night good night <laughs> thanks everybody for coming and enjoy yourself bye Good night.